What's going on, Nation? Cover Killer here. It's time to do a quick little album review because, well, I don't typically review this genre. But then again, I've gone out of my element over the past couple of months. Might as well do it one more time. I'm going to review the album Hell, the sequel, which is the long-awaited album by Bad Meets Evil, which is a collaboration between Eminem and Royce the Five Nine. Now, if you don't know your history, these two had a collaboration on the Slim Shady uh, LP way back in the late 1990s. Uh, which was entitled Bad Meets Evil. They adapted the project with the name of that song. And now, over a decade later, they've released their first full-length EP, which is this album right here. Now, of course, a lot has changed within that uh, time period. We've had beef between Royce to 5 9 and D12, which has caused Eminem and Royce to have some difficulty, some beef of their own, a little bit of a non-communication between the two of them which eventually ended after the unfortunate death of Proof, which was a member of the, uh, the D12 clique. They eventually got back into the studio, and Eminem, of course, going through all the difficult problems that he did, uh, launched his recovery project and the Relapse album in 2009 and in 2010. His rhyming style, his delivery has definitely changed significantly. There's more of an acceleration to his style. And Royce the Five Nine had probably his most successful album of his career two years ago with Street Hop. Now, with this particular album, these changes are definitely evident. Eminem's rhyming is still just as tight as before, and the speed, the acceleration, is definitely still present. Royce also is able to show a lot of acceleration on this album as well, and it definitely seems to have a lot of power. There's a lot of passion and a lot of energy, and it's a very believable energy that you get on this EP on some of the tracks. This is not something, however, that really carries over on each and every track. There are a couple songs that feel a little bit weak. However, on the songs that are strong, such as tracks number one and number three, you definitely feel the passion, you definitely feel the energy, and the energy is all very, very believable. It almost seems as though, well, Royce is having a lot of fun, and M has definitely found himself uh, in this collaborative effort. Now, this collaborative effort is also not without its guest performances. We have a guest performance from Bruno Mars, another one from rapper Mike Epps, as well as the supergroup Slaughterhouse, which Royce the Five Nine is a member of, who was just recently signed to Shady uh, Records. These songs, I will say, while the, the duo with uh, the Slaughterhouse is fairly decent, and Bruno Mars, of course, does have his trademark pipes, I'll admit that these are three songs that are well, kind of weak. The rhyming is tight with the track with Slaughterhouse, However, it just seems a little bit rushed in some locations, almost as though there is a little bit of off timing here, and it kind of exposes that there's a little bit of weakness within the Slaughterhouse group, though it seems that whenever individually they collab with Royce the Five Nine or with one another in only like a one or two person format, it seems to work a whole heck of a lot better. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about Bad Meets Evil. On the songs where it's just Eminem and Royce the Five Nine handling the mix, definitely the stronger parts of the album, the stronger portions, but once again, this is something where you would almost expect this to be a powerhouse record from front to back, and it has some very, very nice moments. However, it's something that, unfortunately, it's very geared towards the first half of the album. As it starts to linger on, as it starts to filter through, it seems to get a little bit weaker. It doesn't seem to have as strong of a material. The beats are all very well done. However, it seems that the construction overall, whenever you add in the rhymes and you add in the flow and everything like that, just don't really match up to some of the real quality gems that you get on the first part of this record. Almost as though they let off with their best foot forward, and then after that they took their foot off the gas and kind of lost focus a little bit. Well, this particular record is definitely something that a lot of people are going to pick up and be very excited about, myself included, whenever I found out that it was being released. I think that fans are going to kind of be lukewarm to this. It's going to be something where... The true fans, the fans that would basically take Eminem's ball sweat and recycle it, and or either not really recycle it, but keep it in a jar on their you know windowsill or something like that, they're going to adore this record because Eminem is on it. The Royce fans are definitely going to like hearing something from their favorite rapper. But overall, I'm feeling about a high five to maybe a low six on this particular record, which is not necessarily a bad thing. This is something that definitely has a couple quality gems on it, however, it does not really have that classic, 
must-own feeling to it. This is an album that is a nice little treat, something that you're going to get a couple of jams to really pump out in your car stereo system. Either that or a couple of things that are really going to get you really excited. I was very excited during the first half of this record, thinking that if this was the way that it was going to pan out throughout the entire release, this had a real potential to be a real gem. However, it falls a little bit short, and that's something that is unfortunate because it had a lot of potential, and it almost feels as though some of that potential was slightly squandered. Cover Killer Nation saying, don't judge a book by its cover, don't judge an album by its first couple of songs, because sometimes, whenever you listen to the rest of it, it's just not as good. Take care.